Okay, hopefully this is working and connected. All right. Give me just a moment here. Okay. Well, welcome. And uh, today I thought we'd paint some butterflies in watercolor. Uh, let me know if you're able to hear me okay. I haven't done a live stream in um, about a year. Wanted to get back into it. I um, think it's a little bit more fun to have a live element on my channel. So without further ado, I did some of these yesterday just to play around with some colors and uh, and shapes. So going to do some similar ones today. The paper, I've got uh, Fabriano uh, cold press paper that I just cut down into these small cards. And I think I will start with this pretty greenish, greenish brown butterfly. So I'm just going to leave that off to the side. And if you're not comfortable hand sketching, if you try this on your own, you can always um, download some free, um, you know, vector graphics on um, Unsplash or Pixabay.com and trace them. If you want some more realistic shapes, I'm just going to start and. do my best to make them even. Little, little tricky. Erase that little mistake there. And draw the body. And Start by mixing up some of the colors. I like this, uh, it's like a army green color. Get that ready. And let's see, do some of this brown here in the corner. I don't remember what this um, paint set is called. I ordered on Amazon probably a couple years ago. I will add the link in the description after the fact. So I'm just gonna get that ready. And I'm going to start by pre-wetting the paper here, one wing at a time. Then with the green, I'm just going to touch around the outside edge and let it flow into the middle. This 
see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Add a little bit of brightness with some yellow right in the middle there. And then just rinsing and blotting my brush a bit. I don't want to add more water. Just slightly spread that around a little bit. And maybe a little bit more green in the corners here. The edge. I'm going to work on this wing. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit more before I add that burnt sienna color. So I want it to stay a little bit more where I put it and if it's too wet it'll flood into the the whole wing area. Again, using that green just around the edge. That little bit of yellow in the middle. rinse and blot my brush and just kind of push that around a little bit. I want to keep them light and airy, not too heavy handed with the paint, just delicate looking. And add a little bit more green here again. You can use whatever paper you have, but if you're not using a cotton paper, if it's more, um, if it's like cellulose based, you're going to have a little bit more of a hard time getting it to blend the way you like. So that's just something to be aware of if you're using more of a student grade paper on this. I like the Artistico. Um, it's actually it's really good quality. I paint on it a lot and it's not as outrageously expensive as uh, some other brands and I, I find it pretty comparable in a lot of ways to um, you know, arch paper for most things that I, I want to do with it. My coffee break. Alright, so now this wing is it's still wet, but it's um, it's lost its sheen, or it has its most of its sheen. I rather it has most of its sheen, but it's lost the wet puddle. So I'm gonna work a little quickly. I'm just gonna drop that in. If I want it to blend a little bit more, because I probably waited just a bit too long, I'm just going to rinse and blot my brush so it's. I'm not adding a lot more water to it. I'm just going to lightly blend that edge of the burnt sienna paint into that green. All 
right and I think on this side as well get a little bit more paint there this is also starting to dry a bit quickly feathering out a little bit better but still want to help it along a bit by rinsing blotting and just lightly using the tip to push that paint around Now for the bottom wings. Normally I would wait until these were fully dry, but since this is a live broadcast, um, I'm just going to be careful. <laughs> I'm just going to wet both wings at once. And mix up a little bit more of my green here. It's actually pretty easy once you've done it a few times. Little of that yellow. And let me know if I need to talk louder. I tend to <laughs> uh, mumble a bit if I'm painting while talking and I need to get better at that too. Right now for that burnt sienna. Just gotta remember to move a little quickly when you're trying to make sure that the uh, paper doesn't dry too quickly.
let me know in the chat or the comments other projects that you'd like me to paint um, either pre-recorded or live Let's paint the body. I've got this darker brown here. You know what? I want to make it darker than that, so I'm going to mix it with my blue some blue over here Maybe that's too blue there we go and I'm gonna use my finer brush for that this Escoda Kronos size 2 I just got uh, just got this a couple weeks ago I like it it's very um, snappy the other one I was using was my silver black velvet size 8 those little antennas just gonna use the tip of my brush here let's see and it's dry enough that I can paint the little delicate veins Let's mix up a little bit more of that burnt sienna, and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of that green as well. So again, pretty simple. Make a little uh, triangle shape there, bring it down there. And then just have them connect at the points, then along the long side of that shape. Repeat over here. on the bottom shape like that this wing's still a little bit damp so the line is spreading out a little bit but I don't mind
This is the first one that I did yesterday. This one obviously came out a little bit more uh, green. This one's a little bit yellowish orange. I think I like the green one a little bit better, but you know, it's pretty much the same same technique that I did for both. I also use a little bit more of a darker color for the tips, which I think I like that better. Um, but I don't know, I like this one too. Let me know what you think. Um, let's move on to another one. And let's see, I think we will do a pink and purple butterfly. But first, I need some fresh water. Zoom back out a little bit here. Momentary housekeeping, bear with me. I just realized that I see I have a chat on one window but not through my streaming so if you're chatting with me my apologies I can't see it um, let me just get over there real quick um, lollipop strawberry says a rainbow butterfly that'd be pretty um, uh, Alona thank you that's very sweet all right, you know, I think I can just leave it on this window. All right, I'll just leave it on this window. Thanks for bearing with me, everyone. I'm, uh, you know, the tech here is something I have to get more used to, but I'd like to do more live streams, so hopefully I will get better with that. Okay, moving on. Let's, uh... Clean that up. We'll just do one more for today. And you know, maybe give that rainbow butterfly uh, an idea for next time. Okay, here we have, oop, I already got a square. I'll turn this way. All right, something like this. Different shape than the last one. Again, start somewhat in the middle. Expand a wing. And try to do the same thing on this side. Let's see how this shape turns out. Good, not great. 
but I think it's once it's all painted in it'll it'll look fine. It doesn't have to look identical. All right, so we have Hmm, it's a pretty pink. Got a little bit of uh, work to activate it here. If you use a pan set like this, it really does help to um, spray them a little while in advance to help soften up the surface which I did but it still takes a little bit of time to do that I do if you see my other videos I typically use my my tube watercolor paints but um, I like having a set like this where if you're not really sure what colors you're gonna use while you're um, you know, just warming up or just, you know, trying to do something fun and easy and not take yourself too seriously. Um, oh, did I drop the feed? Oh, okay. I got an error, but I think we're okay. <laughs> okay. Um, as I was saying, if you're just warming up or um, experimenting, then I like having a palette like this where all the colors are there and ready and I don't have to think too hard about it. So, all right, and on the side of that, that's a pretty purple color. Though I might want something darker than that. Maybe I'll mix that with some of that blue. Oh, that's very blue. I think that'll work. Well, maybe a little bit more purple. Okay. All right, and I'm going to do the same as before, wet one wing at a time. Um, one trick is if you have trouble seeing where you put the water, take a little bit of your pigment, like a really watery amount, and then you can see the tinted water where it goes. And if there's a little bit too much pink in the middle, just blot up a little bit there. Like I said, I want to keep this more light and delicate and transparent. Oh, I should probably re-wet that a bit so that it'll flow. So 
So again, just did with the uh, the wet the wet area and touch the pigment just along the edge so it flows towards the middle. And use a clean, mostly damp brush to nudge that pigment along. Now I'll see what happens if I don't wait too long on the purple. I waited before so the, the burnt sienna wouldn't move in too quickly, but if I have a little bit more wet and I want the purple to go in a little bit more, let's, let's try that. That looks nice. I'm just nudging it around, but I don't want to be too too fussy with it. And just for fun, let's add a little bit of black to those tips. Maybe a little bit along that outer edge. Cool. Now let's do that next wing. That got dirty. Let's start over with that. Still had some black on my brush. Don't want that. I think I got too much paint on my brush there. Just a little bit out of control. There we go, that's better. Now the purple. And I'm, I'm just touching the tip as I go along. If I were to do it just in a straight line, then the purple just kind of carries with the brush until I lift it. So once you tap it with the tip, it releases that purple So that's why I was doing it uh, like that and not just all the way around. And right now a little bit of that black in the corner.
It's looking good. And do the same thing on the bottoms. I'll just do the one wing at a time. I think I need to make a little bit more of that purple. brush is a little bit too wet. I'm just going to blot it off. There. That way I can get a more concentrated purple without diluting it too much. Cool. This is feathering really nicely. I don't even have to move it around. All right, a little bit of black just on these little bottom bumpy things. This is flowing nice too. Go right to that purple. right to the black without rinsing my brush so I don't add too much extra water although now that's a lot darker than this side so it's Just that. Most of this wing is dry, 
So to fix that hard edge, rinse, blot, and just add a slight amount of dampness to help move that black paint and soften that edge. Great. Now for the body, let's just mix a little blue with that black. And maybe more of this See, Tired Mama says it's something you're wanting to try one day. You have a sketch made to have the wings look like stained glass. That sounds cool. I've done some of those stained glass style paintings and they're really fun because you can just paint each section independently, sort of like these wings, but you can do a, you know, as big of a painting as you want. You don't have to worry about covering large areas with a large wash. And um, I always really enjoyed uh, doing things like that as well. So if you paint it, I would like to see it. You can share it on, um, well, you can DM me if you have Instagram or uh, Facebook, but um, that'd be cool to see. So I'd like to see that. All right, now for the body. tiny antennas. Let's have these, let's see, curve a little bit inward. It's looking good. Now we'll do the same thing with the um, the veins on that one. I'm gonna use more of that purple. Just to keep it a little subtle. Give this one a couple little veins off of the main veins, like that. Another reason I want to go live more beyond just being able to interact real time, which is really cool, kind of scary, but mostly cool, <laughs> um, is I, I really like getting feedback on what people would really um, like to watch and what would help them learn best. And 
sometimes when I'm making videos, I don't know if what I'm posting is actually helpful. Um, so if there's a way like going live that I can get more of a gauge on, you know, what people you know, really want to learn how to do or what just helps them get, you know, move the needle with their watercolor practice. Um, you know, if there's a place where you're getting stuck and you just feel like you're not getting, um, you know, not making progress and therefore you're not having as much fun painting. Um, you know, I, I'd like to know those things so I can uh, do what I can to help, you know, whether it's just a fun project that gives you some inspiration to pick up your brushes again, or if it's something that, um, you know, you just haven't figured out like how to uh, master a technique or um, something like that. So um, yeah, again, I'd really just like to find out from you whether you post it in the chat or um, if you're on my uh, email list, you can send me a direct email from um, from something I post or you can DM me. I just, um, you know, I'd just really like to know what I can do to help with um, helping you stay creative. So here's what we did today. Let me switch over to my other screen here, make sure you can see that. Yeah, so that's, um, I hope you had fun doing this with me. And like I said, if you want extra help, or you feel like you're stuck, um, you know, reach out and I'll see what I can do to help you out. And of course, let me know what other um, subjects that you'd like to see me do live or in one of my pre-scheduled videos. I uh, just want to um, help you have fun with it. So that's it for today's stream, and I will see you next time. Bye.